So with all that said, time for the main attraction here. I'm going to kick it over to Roop Saini, who will help us with getting started. Roop, over to you. All right, thank you. What's up, party people? My name is Roop, and I've been working with new developers uh, who are starting with iModelJS and onboarding new teams for the last couple of years. And that's what we'll do in the session as we'll get started. And there are two things uh, that you want to think about when you think about getting started with that model JS. You want to think about starter apps, applications that you can use to look at the technology and, and get familiar with what we have to offer, and uh, getting your data on iModelJS. Uh, so we'll look at both these things. And to start, start on the landing page. You click on Start Now. And then on the, on the left, you'll see two uh, sections here. There's offline and online. And these are the two routes in which you can get started. The offline mode is the quickest way to just uh, check out one of our apps and see what we have to offer. There are three steps for getting uh, set up. First, you want to get all the tools. And uh, all our model JS applications, they're uh, Node.js based. So uh, you want to get Node.js version 12.x. Then we have a kit for source control. And we recommend Visual Studio Code for the IDE uh, for development. It's, I've been using it the last couple of years, and it's really lightweight and incredible tool. So we highly recommend it. And then uh, we provide you with a starter app. We call this one the desktop starter. And over here, you can see the command for cloning the repo. Once you clone your code, uh, you will need to go through these install and build steps. And then you can uh, go ahead and start your app. So to save us some time, I already did a clone. And I have the repo here. And uh, let's go ahead and do an NPM start. Uh, I need to switch to the directory. Perfect. We got the red out of the way in the beginning. Uh, npm start. So this, I uh, skipped the install and the build steps. If you have not worked with npm or node before, just what brief summary of what happens is when you do an npm install, uh, all Node.js apps they have this file called the package.json, and it has a list of all the packages, the dependencies that this uh, project uh, needs. And when you do npm install, it just downloads all those packages. So if you if you open the package.json here we'll see a bunch of uh, iModelJS uh, core packages. So this, these are all the dependencies. And this is also the place where you would add any external packages that you would use. And this is all uh, TypeScript and JavaScript. So you can pull in any TypeScript or JavaScript package that you might need for your project. And then we have the npm run build. What that does is it transpiles all the TypeScript into uh, JavaScript. And it creates this output folder, the lib folder. And that is what is used for running your application. So this is our desktop starter. It needs a moment for the development server to start up. For those of you who have used iModel 1.x, the key, one of the key features that 2.0 has is uh, we uh, have hot module reloading. So it might take a minute or so longer to get started to launch the app. But once it's up and going, uh, you just need to edit your code and hit Save. And it immediately refreshes and get your changes. So that creates for a much more flexible and, uh, and quick uh, developer experience. So the time in the beginning makes up for the time uh, later. So this is what the app looks like. We have a, we provide a sample I model to you guys, uh, you can see over here. And then on the right, you can see some navigation tools. Uh, and on the left, you have some more tools. And this, what this is, what we offer here, this model that you see, it's uh, a flat file. This is a uh, a snapshot I model, and what this is. It, so Keith talked about how in I model JS, uh, specifically I model Hub, when you push your changes in, it's it's like the Git for infrastructure project. So you're pushing your data in, and you have a timeline of change. So throughout this process, you accumulate more and more content within your I model. So what the snapshot is, it's it's an archive of the I model captured in one of those moments. And then you can uh, use this file for sharing, and you can use it for offline access as well. And uh, that's what we have here. So let's uh, go ahead and check out some of these tools. So these are just basic navigation tools. You can move your model around. You can rotate. Uh, then you can zoom into a specific section. Then you have uh, you can go to the previous state, next state. And I like this cube. It's for kind of viewing how you are looking at the model, which angle. Then we have this, uh, let's do one more. We got this measure tool. What this does is it lets you measure distance between any two points or two elements. And these are just a few examples of the kind of tools we have. In the next session, you'll see a lot more of the tools and the capabilities that we have to offer. 
So um, yeah, that covers our offline mode. And the key thing that I didn't mention here, as the name suggests, this is an offline uh, workflow. So you don't need to be connected to the iModel Hub or even the internet to work when you're using this, uh, this offline route. Next up, we have uh, online. So this is gonna this is a bit longer in terms of setting up, but this is what the workload would be for an actual engineering project because uh, this uses the iModel Hub. So you have the ability for multiple people to be working on the project and pushing your data in using our synchronization app. And the key difference here is we get to create an iModel on the iModel Hub. So get the tools, just as in the previous step. Then we get a sample I model. Now, there are several ways in which you can create an I model on the I model hub. We offer you three different options here. The first is just the examples. So we provide you with a bunch of examples, uh, like the one that you saw in our Electron app, this one. And what these are, are uh, different models from different infrastructure domains. And you can just use them to get started, uh, play with our API, and something to just start you off. And then you have the option of local file. So let's say you have a, a single design file, like a single RVT or a DGN, and that's what you want to use for starting out your app. You can just choose that file, open that up, and that'll uh, load an iModel on the hub just with that file. But that's a that's a iModel that you cannot really make changes to, and that's where the synchronizer comes in. This is a workflow that you would be using, uh, that an engineering company would use for synchronizing their design changes. This will allow you to synchronize an entire folder, multiple design files across different machines, and you can synchronize and the iModel Hub manages all of the synchronization part of it and keeping your uh, iModel from all these different sources intact and they're ready to go for your digital twin. So to start off, well, in this case, uh, we'll just try out an iModel example from the iModel Hub. And I created one already just to save us some time. I have the stadium sample right here. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out. Now you will see there's a sample code over here that you can get. This is slightly different than what we offered in the offline mode. This is our iModel.js samples repo, and it has a bunch of uh, web examples. So earlier we saw desktop, and this is the web case. So let's take a look at that. So I have, once again, to save us time, I cloned our samples repo here. We'll go to interactive apps, and this gives you a list of web apps that we offer to get you started. Now these are based on varying levels of complexity. So the basic viewport app, that's the most basic uh, web app that we have. It's all it is is a viewport. The idea is it's just lightweight if you're trying to just experiment with the viewport. Then we have the simple viewer app. This has a couple more components. You will have a table, a grid view, and a property pane. And then you have the nine zone sample. Now this is an example of a full scale application where you have uh, the ability to have multiple pages and front stages, and you have uh, features like notification manager. So this is, if you were to use our uh, UI standards, this is the sample app or the starter app that you would go with. So in this case, we'll start with basic viewport, keep things simple. And let's go ahead and open this up in VS Code. So in the previous case, you saw that we opened a file that we had a flat file in our on our machine. In this case, our iModel is on the hub. So we need to define which or we need to refer to that iModel in our config. So we're going to replace this variable iModel.js, uh, the name of that test iModel, and we will go ahead and do that from the dashboard. So let's head on over there. This is the example, the stadium example. And let's go ahead and paste it here. Hit save. And then we'll start up our app. Again, I took care of our install and build steps. So all we have to do is do the start. Okay, let's click Open iModel. And this opens up, this is an iModel on the iModel hub that this web app is uh, fetching. And uh, this is a pretty big sample that we provide. It's a, it's, a, it's a full stadium. 
And this, as you can see, the basic viewport app, pretty simple. You just have a few navigation tools on the top right. This is a great place to get started if you're working on uh, just a single feature or if you want to play with the API. Okay, and one more thing, you can see the localhost 3000. That's the default port. It runs locally when you're developing, but uh, after two years of working with this, I've noticed people hate localhost. Every time you give a demo, they don't like the idea of seeing it on localhost. It might as well not be real. So there's a, a challenge that we made for you of how you would deploy your iModel GS app. And you can look at that later during the office hours. And I recommend getting your app deployed early on in the stage uh, so you can get feedback and, and also keep it real. <laughs> um, OK, so that takes care of our offline mode and online mode. So let's do a quick summary of what we looked at so far. So we talked about looking at our starter apps and uh, how to get your data on iModel Hub. And in our starter apps, we looked at the offline case. And this is what you would use to get started quickly. And then we looked at the online case. And this is the more traditional workflow. Or I would say it's the, the real world use case. And in the offline mode, we looked at our desktop starter, was the sample app that we looked at. And we looked at a snapshot iModel, which was that uh, flat file for offline mode. And then on um, the online side, we looked at some web starters, which are interactive apps. And then we looked at our iModel uh, on iModel Hub. So I'm just going to type in iModel Hub. OK. Um, one key thing to note here is this is the desktop starter, and that's the web starter. So iModel.js is cross-platform. So the app we saw here, this is web-based. And the desktop starter, this is uh, Electron-based, and this is for desktop. I'm going to start this up uh, for later. This is the one we'll go with for the rest of the session. And this is one of the key features of iModel.js. You can use uh, a lot of the same code to build applications for mobile, desktop, and uh, and web. And uh, what that does is it allows your iModel.js application and your data to be accessed uh, across multiple platforms. And our one of our key goals is to make your data accessible. So that's a, a key tenant of what we have to offer, which brings us to the next topic of uh, data. So we'll talk about the different ways in which you can get data and we looked at the sample data already. And now this is about how would you get your own data. So let's click on, now we're back in the registration dashboard where you can create a new iModel. So click on new iModel and we'll see we have the iTwin synchronizer, which is the case you would use for getting your data on the hub. And you can click download and that opens up the iTwin synchronizer page. What you would do here is you would what this does is you would create an essentially creates an empty i model so you can name it whatever you want but this is going to be your i model on the hub and this is similar to what you see in git you create a new repo it's an empty repo and then you can start pushing changes into that and it starts accumulating changes and and that's your copy of source control so it's the same way here we create an empty i model uh, using this interface and i already created one up for us um, and then you can start pushing your own design files into it Okay, so now let's talk about the iTwin synchronizer. And I know this is a lot of topics and I'm going through a lot right now. And I want to say that we're going to make a recordings available later of these sessions so you can watch it at your own pace and try this out and go along with it. So the iTwin synchronizer, this is our uh, application. It's, it's free for anyone to use. Keith mentioned that our goal is to make the data open for you guys. So you can download this and you can use this for synchronizing your infrastructure projects. And the cool thing about this is that it seamlessly integrates with the workflows that are currently being used in the infrastructure industry. So you could be using MicroStation, you could be using Revit, and you have a bunch of design files that are generated. You don't have to change anything about your workflow. You can just pop up with the atom synchronizer, point it to the folder where your design files are being created, 
and just hit synchronize and it keeps synchronizing all the changes. Every time you make a change on the design uh, application, let's say MicroStation, you hit save, you just click synchronize and your iModel copy is immediately updated. So let's open up the iTwin synchronizer here. So this is what it looks like. On the top, you get to pick uh, which I model you want to synchronize to. So in this case, uh, we'll go with that MTI model that we created. You click on new synchronization, and then you select the I model. Now one project can have multiple I models, but usually you just have one I model per project, and we just map to that, that I model. We give the synchronization a name. Um, so in this case, let's just say jumpstart. And uh, then you point it out to the folder where your design files are being created. In this case, I have uh, some sample files here. And this is a key point because you don't need to move around any design files or have to go through all that headache. Just point it to your output directory and you're good to go. And then over here, you will select all your design files. Now, now there, there could be two cases here. One is uh, if you're using MicroStation or some of the Bentley products, then you would want to have your master files are the ones you want to put on this list. So in this case, I know these are the master files. But if, or if you're using like interchange format or Revit, then you need to put all your design files here. And the idea is you might not know what your master files are. So in that case, you can just add all the files. And what it does is it looks through all the files and finds out which ones are the masters. And then you can unlink the ones that are not, uh, that are reference files and only keeps those master files here. So let's select these and let's do next. Okay, now what it's doing right now is it's checking to see if I have the bridges I need to bridge this data over into the iModel hub. And that's a whole subject, so we'll, we'll get into that. Now what these bridges are, uh, they are essentially, they take your traditional design data in whatever format it might be in and bridges it over into a more unified format. And what's happening here is it's checking to see if I have all the bridges downloaded for these particular design files. And it looks like I do. So we hit save and then we can just click synchronize. And over here, you can uh, give a comment for your uh, change. Again, this is very similar to Git, how when you commit your code, you put in a label of what you updated. So over here, let's just do initial commit and you can create a named version if you want to view this in our web viewing tool that we have to offer. So let's do that as well. Let's give it a named version here. We'll call it uh, initial. Let's just go with that. So I can think of right now, click synchronize. And now it's synchronizing those uh, changes. And this process can take two, three, two or three minutes or longer, depending on how many files you have. And it does the check bridge assignment step again. The reason it does that is because every time you synchronize, you might have uh, new versions of the bridges out and you might need to update your bridges. So it needs to check every time, or you may have some more design files from some other format that also needs to be, the bridges of which need to be downloaded as well. So it wants to make sure that it has all the latest bridges and your data is gonna be ported over in uh, the most reliable format. And you can see the list of bridges that we have here. So if I click about, that's uh, some of the bridges we have. And again, Keith mentioned openness. So we don't just stick to Bentley products. Uh, we are also creating bridges for other uh, applications. So we have Revit, we have Civil 3D, we have interchange formats like IFC. So we provide support for all these different formats and Bentley is committed to keep adding to this list and uh, creating more and more bridges as we go along. And the cool thing about uh, these bridges is that they're also open source. So they're iModelJS based and you can write your own custom bridges. That's not gonna be part of this jumpstart, but maybe in the next one or in the near future, we're gonna put out some samples, which you can open up and, and start editing code and write your own bridges for whatever application, source application you're using. And you can define your own schemas and bridge data over. And that brings me to biz. So how is the data structured uh, when you port this over? So in infrastructure, as you might be aware, there are all these different uh, domains. Uh, you could be de dealing with plant, you could be dealing with uh, civil or, or electric, 
And all these different domains have different ways of organizing data. They have their own definitions of how the data is structured. And then you have different source applications. You could have MicroStation, Revit, you know, they all have their different ways. So the idea of a digital twin, how do you get all these disparate sources and align it into a single format? That's where these bridges come in. And that's where what we provide the biz schemas, which are a standard set of schemas that we've created. And what they do is they take all these different formats and uh, bridge them into a, a single base set of schemas and then more specialized schemas for each infrastructure domain. And this foundational common set of schemas, what that does is it allows us to create data that's uh, that's unified in a single format. And that's something that the IOM model specializes in is bringing all these domains together. And this paves way for your digital twin and for projects that are from multiple domains to come together in a single format. So that's exactly what's happening here. We just have one format in this case, but so we completed our synchronization. Now you can see synchronization completed with issues. So let's click to see what that is. So you'll see some of these issues. Now what's happening here is the, the, the bridging succeeded, but you can define standards, quality standards for uh, your data. So in this case, the authoring application, it has some standards of what it accepts as uh, some colors um, and some elements need to be a certain color. And if those tests don't pass, then it runs those validation checks and it lets you know if there's some sort of mismatch. And this is completely, that's, this is completely in control of the, the author and the company that's uh, defining these standards. So in this case, we're just seeing that these, these weren't perfect. So we might need to look back and make those fixes on the, the original authoring application. So let's click go to iModel, and this pops open our iModel that we got from the design files into in the iModel hub. And over here, you can see the list of changes. Now, these are all the changes that we just uh, submitted to get our data up and running. And then over here, you'll see this toggle for viewing. This is, again, we clicked on we clicked on the named version option. Now, what's happening here is it allows us the ability to view this in our flagship viewing tool. It's called Design Review. And what Design Review is, it's uh, it's an iModel JS based uh, viewer, uh, and it's got a bunch of features to it. It can do stuff. Uh, it's got saved views. Uh, it's got uh, version compare. Version compare. It's a it's a pretty cool feature. It's uh, what that lets you do is there are these different states of the iModel. So you submit a bunch of changes, and you can have different versions. So you can compare these versions, <laughs> almost like a diff, as you would diff your code if you were using GitHub. So when you use GitHub, you, you diff your code from a previous uh, version, and you can see some red code that was removed and green code that was added. In a similar way with version compare, you can see the assets in an infrastructure project that were added or removed. And that's just one of the, the many features that we offer. Uh, some others are uh, clash detection is a really popular one. And, uh, and yeah, the, the list goes on. So over here, we select the 3D model that we want to view. Press enter iModel, and that gives us our, our data. Now, this is the data from the design file, port it over into iModel Hub. Like I said, there are all these tools and features. Uh, I'm not going to go into them right now, but uh, that could be safe for maybe a later session. The key thing here is how would you get uh, this data in your, in your app now? Uh, because ultimately you want to be able to pull your own data in and customize your iModel.js application to uh, add whatever feature you're working on. So let's pop it open. We have our desktop viewer. So you, uh, what this lets you do is you also have the ability to open an online mode. And over here you can see our, this is the, the iModel we created. Bad naming, we shouldn't have called it empty iModel because it's not empty anymore, but uh, fits. Um, fits the, the scenario for now. Okay, it's opening. The first time the iModel opens, by the way, it takes uh, a moment. And the reason for that is, again, Keith mentioned that there's no single copy of the iModel that it's looking at that's on the iModel hub. Each client is gonna have its own uh, individual copy, uh, briefcase of the iModel, and that allows that uh, independent workflow for, for infrastructure designers uh, that are spread out. So this is our, our iModel from the iModel hub in our desktop app. Okay, so let's go back to our notes. 
Now we got some iModel data on the iModel hub. The last piece of the puzzle is snapshot. How would you get your own snapshot? And we talked about how this is a pretty key feature to be able to open an iModel that's uh, not tied to the iModel hub, but it's independent, it's open data. So we'll look at that as well. So we go back to the iTwin synchronizer and over here you have the style top right, click on generate snapshots, give the snapshot a name. Uh, let's call it uh, not empty <laughs> snapshot. Browse, again, you will select your folder. Let's go with uh, where do we have our data. These are the design files that we have, select that. Select your master files again. Uh, we got these two, click open. And we simply click generate. And again, it does the standard bridge checks to make sure that our bridges are up to date. And then it starts uh, creating our snapshot. Now this is pretty key just to mention the idea of openness and open data. And the snapshot is, a, is, a, is essentially a mechanism that allows you to do that. You don't really have to stick to Bentley services. You can generate the snapshot and use uh, it for your own ecosystem that you might be working on. So I want to stress on the fact that you're not tied to this technology. This is open and this is an ecosystem that's for anyone to use. But at the same time, uh, our services, like the ones I mentioned, version compare, design validation, they speak for themselves. So I do, I would say that we hope that you would uh, try them out and uh, see the value in them. So this is going to take uh, first on time and how are we doing on questions? Yeah, thanks, Roop. Uh, we do have a few questions here. Uh, do we want to take those now or should we wait for you to, uh, to finish up? Uh, we can we can go ahead and start. Okay, sounds great. Uh, let's see. I will uh, pull up the questions, and I'm I'm not going to push them to the screen since you're still sharing, but I I will read them aloud. Uh, yeah. the, the first question we we received, um, we spoke a little bit uh, both in Keith's presentation, I think as you were starting as well about uh, the scalability and, and large I models, and and the question we received is, uh, what is our definition of a large I model? And uh, Colin, I, I don't know. Uh, we have Colin Kerr, who's one of our Senior managers for software development. Colin, maybe you'd like to take that question. Uh, yes. Hello. Um, so we talk about large I models. Uh, we talk about an I model that includes, you know, things like an entire road system, uh, industrial plant, multiple buildings, some very large things like uh, an airport. Um, you know, right now we have we have I models that are, you know, in the in the range of about twenty gigabytes that are actually in production. Uh, and, and we've seen our experiences that we can we can today have on models uh, that encompass data that no one has been able to see all together at once before. Um, so when we say large, we, we mean quite large, right? Uh, and, and we can uh, pop them up on the web in in just a matter of seconds um, and show you a full 3D view or 2D view or take into the properties. Thanks, Colin. And the roof oh, looks like you just, uh, you're done there. Did you want to? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's wrap up. Thank you, Colin. Um, let's go ahead and wrap up here. So we can click Show in Explorer, and that shows us our snapshot, not empty snapshot. We have it here. And uh, they open offline snapshot. Again, we had this, uh, the one that we had opened before. So you just open it like uh, you would open a file. So let's go ahead and browse to, um, this was in sample DGNs, not empty. As you can see, Ed, I had a bunch of examples before, right before this. Uh, so this is our our snapshot I model, and you can view it in your desktop starter app. And this uh, essentially is how you would get started with a starter app and getting your own data using your own data with iModel JS. People usually ask me, okay, so we got started. Now what are the next steps? So where do we go from here? And something I can say from uh, my experience that I found really useful was to work on just small features, like just small uh, pieces uh, to check out the API and get familiar with what iModelJS has to offer. And that really helped me personally. I didn't take on anything too overwhelming. It was just these uh, small tasks and we wanna give you the same experience. So we have, uh, as Jason mentioned earlier, these challenges that we've laid out for you. And we highly recommend that you check them out. And if you run into any issues you wanna talk about, uh, we are available here for office hours uh, today and tomorrow. Um, so this might be a good time to try these out. 
And yeah, the last thing I would say is just uh, wait for, before you try them out, wait for Josh to do his session because he, you know, he's got a lot of cool stuff to show. So uh, yeah, that's my last bit. And I think that wraps up uh, everything I have, Jason. 